proceed to order for November 27, 2018. The matters listed below are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent uh, permitted by law. This is recorded by uh, the school committee's recording secretary, Leanna Harris. I'd like to stand for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Ms. Murtag, uh, I'd like to introduce our guest tonight. Sure would. I am honored to introduce Alexandra Lewis uh, from the Welch School. She was the Welch School principal for the day um, with, with Mrs. Massa. Uh, we welcome Alexandra, her parents, and her sister here tonight with Mrs. Massa. Um, her favorite subject is math because she finds it easier than other subjects. It just comes natural. She really enjoys dancing and is part of the Dance with Dina studio. Alex likes to play games with her sister and wants to be a dance teacher when she grows up. She was really <coughs> excited to be principal for the day because she wants to see what the job of the principal was all about and what other students do during the day. Alex has never won a raffle before and was really excited about the victory. Alex gave all the students extra recess as part of her <laughs> rule making for the day. <laughs> Welcome, great. Alex. Come join Mr. Olivia over here. That's awesome. <laughs> That's Mr. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next is approval of minutes. Motion to approve regular school committee meeting minutes of November 13th, 2018. Second. Roll call vote. Yes. 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 Okay. Next is uh, approval of bills. Uh, make, I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant A, number 4007, dated November 27th, 2018, the amount of $749,994.80, subject to audit. Second. Okay, you heard the motion. Uh, roll call vote. Mr. Amigo? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Yes. <coughs> yes. Yes. All right, next, uh, continue business. Uh, Ms. Dunn? Uh, MSBA Higgins project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a very quick report. We held our November meeting last week, uh, last week on the uh, 15th, and um, we were told that all of the landscape work, um, la I'm sorry, landscape care has stopped now for the winter, and actually that day, all of our irrigation um, system pipes were being cleared out to shut down the uh, irrigation system. Mm -hmm. So those things are all on track. They were on time and um, right now that field looks very good for the opening in the spring. So that was good. And then there were just routine matters. As I've said before, we're really wrapping things up. Our next meeting, I was, you caught me early. Um, our next meeting will be <laughs> Thursday, December 20th at 4 p.m. here at Higgins. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Uh, next is uh, school start time surveys. Ms. Carpenter, do you? Um, I'd like to suggest that we table this till the next meeting due to the uh, mayor not being able to make it tonight because I know he was very interested in it. Yeah. Okay. Could I, could I ask sure. a question Ms. on Dunn. it, though? Um, one of the things that, that I, would, I would like us to do would be to prepare a list um, almost an agenda for this topic so that we know, um, you know, what types of things we're going to be looking at and, you know, at the next meeting we will discuss, you know, X, the, the meeting after that, Y, Z, just so that we can not only be prepared for the conversations but also to give the staff some time. And um, one of the things that I was going to bring up tonight, uh, Ultimately, this whole discussion regarding school start times is for student achievement. 
that's at the bottom or in the top of every discussion that we have about the whole topic. And um, one of the things that I would like us to look at and to give some time, and actually, this is right up Dr. Lord's alley. I'd like to know if we could look at uh, schedule changes in the daytime at, at the schools. I know sometimes certain um, curriculum are given to the students at different hours at, the, at every level of the system, elementary, middle, and high school. But especially at the high school, if we could look at some scheduling changes, the only, uh, the only one that I'm familiar with was when I was a kid, we had rotating schedule. And if you were a morning person, you prayed for an exam on the morning side, and if you were an afternoon person, you prayed that the exam would be when the schedule came up with the, uh, you know, an afternoon session. But I'd like to know if that was something um, that we could explore uh, and have the staff report back on that. Um, this whole thing is going to take a long time, but I actually think that some of the things that we discussed might be able to be implemented sooner, and for, you know, no, um, no expense. So. Through the chair, if I can yep. respond to Mrs. Dunn. I think that's an excellent um, suggestion. I would say for the committee members to possibly submit those requests of what they want to talk about agenda-wise um, through Maj Maccarelli, mm -hmm. um, and then we can have those things prepared at each meeting um, in anticipation of what you wanted to discuss. Yeah. Thank you. That would be great. Anybody else? All right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Uh, next part of the meeting is public participation. Anyone in the public would like to speak? Okay. All right, so we're moving on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Olivia. Um, the, the first item is information on the MCAS report. I just want to let the public know that um, our October meeting where we did present, October 9th, where we did present the MCAS results, Dr. Lord and I presented them to the school committee. Um, we are going to, uh, it was not recorded live that evening, so we are re-recording it on December 3rd at PBD Access Television. So that report of the MCAS results will be re-recorded on December 3rd. And MCAS be take two. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, that's all set up and ready to go. Good. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Lord um, to uh, talk about curriculum instruction update. So, um, uh, oh, uh, after developing a strong mission for any district, the next best thing is to figure out how you're going to get there. And the uh, teams K-12 are being have been established to develop uh, curriculum at all levels. We met with the first and second grade teachers today. Uh, they'll be uh, reestablishing the curriculum map in mathematics first, then English, and then hopefully science and social studies is all new standards for us. Um, we're meeting with a 3-4 group on Thursday. Kindergarten has their second meeting tomorrow. Um, and meanwhile, the high school, as you know, is going through an NEAC accreditation. Uh, the second standard after the mission standard, number one, is curriculum. And they have a large group of teachers across all disciplines that are marrying themselves to the, pro the profile of the graduate that they established last year and tying it to the standards and coming up with assessments. Uh, it was a very, very exciting meeting yesterday that was run by the high school leadership team. And um, I'm, I'm very excited because as a commissioner, um, NEAC high schools, about 70% of them tend to get dinged on standard number two. And if the, you know, the conversation that got catalyzed at yesterday's meeting at the high school is any indication of where they're going to land in a few months, it's going to be a very strong standard of the seven uh, with curriculum, which is great. So I'm really, really encouraged by that. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Lord. And one thing um, just to bring to everybody's attention is uh, right after the new year, um, Mr. Buckley and his um, team of teachers and administrative team are going to come to present to you everything that they've done thus far with NEASC up to this point. So that will be coming soon. <coughs> Thank you. Um, field trips that need to be approved by the school committee. Uh, the track team would like to go to New York City from March 8th through March 10th, 2019. Motion to follow the recommendation of the superintendent. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Amigo? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Abstain. Mr. Yes. <laughs> yes. The second field trip is the track team. Uh, the track team would like to go to North Carolina, June 13th to the 16th. 
Motion follow recommendation, Superintendent. Second. Roll call vote, please. Yes. Yes. Abstain. Yes. Can you give me a second? The reason I'm looking in the calendar, I want to, how close is that to graduation? It's after graduation. It's after. after. It's, it's after, after graduation. It's the it's nationals. After. Okay. It's the nationals. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want anybody to miss it if they had to go on the trip. <laughs> um, also in your packet, you will find the expenditure reports, um, the student attendance report, uh, and, and you can see we're, we're doing much, each month we're getting better with attendance as we're um, watching that and we need everybody's help so we can be at school in front of teachers. Uh, students can be in front of teachers receiving instruction. And the Bay State um, textile year to date report is also in your packet. And one other thing that I just want to make an announcement. Um, that on December 1st, both the PBD Federation of Teachers and the Salem Teachers Union um, have joined hands to um, for first book. Uh, all parents and children can come to PBD Veterans Memorial High School on this Saturday, December 1st, from 11 to 3 p.m. And there are beautiful books, picture books, chapter books, novels, all genres, um, and you're uh, for free. So please come to the high school from 11 to 3 and, and get some books. There's also going to be transportation um, all around the city, two buses, one on the east end, one on the west end, picking people up if they don't have transportation to the high school. And that will be posted um, this week on our website. So please join us the first, December 1st, 11 to 3, at PB Veterans Memorial High School. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Martek, for that report. Appreciate that. Next item on the agenda is written communications. We have a, a substitute teacher handbook that's uh, being submitted. Um, let's see, with that, uh, does anyone have any questions on that? The, um, the handbook is for uh, presentation during our quality and standards report. Okay. All right. Uh, next subcommittee reports. Uh, Education Subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Olympio. Um, we had an opportunity to meet last week. We talked about the uh, curriculum and instruction mapping that Dr. Lord just uh, talked about. In addition to that, we talked uh, a little bit about the um, planetarium at the high school being used for field trips. Uh, potentially, we've been talking about this a little bit, but I think Ms. Well, Ms. Murtag uh, and other staff members have been contacting um, science teachers at the high school uh, to encourage the use of the planetarium and some students being involved in providing the tours, if you will, of the planetarium. We look forward to um, moving that further along and we'll talk about that more, I think, at each meeting. Our next meeting is January 14th, where we'll talk about, in addition to the planetarium and the uh, um, curriculum mapping, getting updates on that. We also will get an update on the ADL training that's been going on, um, and that's January 14th here at the Higgins. Okay. Uh, Ms. Carpenter? Uh, through the chair to Mr. Hawkman. In regards to the um, usage of the planetarium, in the past we had discussed, and I'm not really sure where we left it off, making it accessible to the senior citizens, yeah. um, having maybe some tours from the Terrigian, bringing them in. Yeah. I don't know if that's something that's on your... I think you might have been at that meeting because we talked about that as well. <laughs> um, I apologize for not bringing it up, but we did talk about that. We talked about it um, in uh, conjunction with... Um, having uh, senior citizens become more familiar with the school at uh, Peabody High School as well as the um, being able to ac uh, uh, access some of the exciting things that are taking place there. We talked about it kind of in, in conjunction with the Veterans Day um, concert that just took place and breakfast and things like that. So uh, to give seniors another opportunity to yeah. attend programming at P Peabody High. Some of them had reached out to me in the past when we had reopened it um, yeah. that they wanted to have an opportunity to tour and we discussed it and, and I don't know where it landed so I'm hoping maybe we can bring it back up again. Yeah, no, absolutely. We talked about it also in terms of students with regard to the sixth grade curriculum which aligns, oh, yeah. which aligns with with um, planetarium and solar system and stuff and things like it's that. It's beautiful so. in there. It is. It's yeah. so nice in there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Thank you for that report, Mr. Hawkman. Uh, next is finance uh, subcommittee. Nothing to report. Okay. School safety. There's nothing to report. Uh, athletics and wellness. Nothing to report. Quality and standards, Ms. Don. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this evening, quality and standards has two. Uh, 
two requests for everyone. Um, we met on the 20th, and the um, the first issue that we discussed and, and are coming to you with a recommendation concerns the substitute teacher handbook. And what we discussed and voted on, and it is the recommendation of the subcommittee, that if you go to page, I think it's six, Under the requirements, the minimum qualifications, um, what the subcommittee members did, we had a nice presentation from um, Mr. Farrell. And it's very difficult to find substitute teachers with three years of college completed or a college degree. And we are very lucky here. We have a lot of substitutes that do have those qualifications. But occasionally, especially during times of shortage, um, there are people who are wonderful substitute teachers, but they may not quite meet that criteria. And it made sense to the committee members that we allow the discretion of the superintendent. Highly qualified people would be selected to serve as per diem substitutes in the district. Long-term substitutes would not change. That still requires a bit, you know, professional background, someone heading heading in the direction of teaching with a minimum of a bachelor's degree, um, three years of college completed is a requirement. And that's because the, the long-term substitutes um, would be in a position of needing to know education. They have to write lesson plans. They have to be able to, uh, you know, coordinate the education for the students. But for the per diem substitutes, uh, it made sense to do this because all of the background would be checked, their experience and the demeanor, their, uh, their way of teaching children would all be um, examined by the superintendent and by a HR department. So what you have in front of you is an actual, hot off the press, uh, publication <laughs> of the Substitute Teacher Handbook with this correction made. This is a policy discussion, but because this is not going into the policy manual, we felt it did not need a second reading. And as soon as this committee takes a vote, and hopefully you vote in favor of it, then the Substitute Teacher Handbook will be adjusted and ready for the 2018-2019 uh, year. So I will make a, uh, make a motion on the recommendation of the subcommittee that the school committee vote to approve the change included in our current substitute teacher handbook regarding minimum qualifications for per diem substitutes. So moved. Second. Uh, you heard the motion second by uh, Mr. Arnotis. Roll call vote, please. Uh, on the motion. Oh, yep. Um, uh, through the chair to Mrs. Dunn. Before we um, update that, have they updated some of the names and titles in here? Because I know Ms. Murtag is still listed as assistant superintendent, and um, Karen McGovern is still listed in here. Oh my gosh, I'll be honest, I didn't even check. I was so intent on page six. So um, before this goes out, yeah. we can do that. <laughs> we should. Yeah, and, uh, if, if Mr. Boer is still, um, you might just want to check pages four, five, where names and um, emails and phone numbers and stuff mm -hmm. are in there before we send it out. Mm -hmm. Good page, catch. Page, yeah, good page catch 11 also lists Mary Ellen Flynn. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. well, I hope she's out there and having a great night. <laughs> Very That's good. all, yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 And I want to thank Mr. Farrell for coming and giving us some good advice on this. Um, the second item is the um, confirmation of the naming of the press box at PVMHS. The Quality Standards Subcommittee, as per our um, procedure, approved the naming of the press box in honor of Lou Sasasimo. Timing is everything. And we took that vote last week to come to the full committee for, conf I will say, for confirmation. Um, it was really very nice to be able to make that uh, presentation 
at the Thanksgiving game when Lucas Sossum was honored for his service. He is a veteran, which is one of the requirements for something to be named at the high school, but also for his over 45 years of broadcasting, announcing games. Lou had a, a show, a long-running show on cable TV where he highlighted student athletes. And he has done a lot to advance the, the uh, students and the student athletes. So uh, I am coming to you with a recommendation from the subcommittee that the press box at PVMHS be named in honor of Louis Sosasimo. So moved. Second. So on the motion. Okay, roll call vote. Yes. 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 And thank you all for doing that. That was, uh, the mayor had come to us with that recommendation and request and uh, it really, it just made sense to everyone to do that. So congratulations to Lucas Sosimo. He's been a PBD guy for forever. Yep. And uh, he's helped the schools quite a bit. And that's all I have for quality and standards tonight. Well, thank you, Ms. Dunn. Thank you. Uh, let's see, liaison to city council and advisory boards? Um, actually, nothing to report on those. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> there is one. We had a parent advisory board meeting last night here at the Higgins. Um, it was sparsely attended, and I actually think it's because I had a problem with, with getting the notice out to everyone. So we'll be correcting that. Um, the topics that were discussed were the school start times. It was interesting to hear the parents talking about that. Um, it's last night were all um, elementary school parents, so they um, they really didn't have um, a lot of information. Uh, they, I'm sorry, they didn't require a lot of information regarding you know the high school, but they did talk about the need for. Um, including people in the discussion and we explained that's why we're discussing the whole uh, topic at our full committee meetings. Um, they also had questions, you know, it's going to change before school, after school, as far as the um, FKO program, as far as any of the activities students do. And uh, it was a nice discussion. We also um, talked to the parents about first book and to let them know so they can let their families at their schools know about it. And we are going to schedule our next meeting, the Parent Advisory Board will be December 17th at 5.30, it's a Monday night, and um, we are potentially going to have it off-site at a local restaurant. So it will be a meeting, but kind of a holiday celebration. <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> They're open to the public. <laughs> so um, if, if uh, Ms. Mr. Olympio has anything to add, I'd be glad to let him. No, you covered it all, Ms. Don. Thank it, you. It was, it was a nice meeting, and uh, we'll look forward to the December meeting. Absolutely. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Don. Uh, oh, Bill? I'm sorry, yes. one other thing. I'm sorry. We will be having, at a, a future date, um, a discussion from the safe, safe Routes to Schools. This was something that I had picked up at the conference, at the MASC conference. Um, there, there is a, a, an organization that helps people with safe routes to school. It's to encourage people to walk to school. Um, I brought in a, a kit. The woman provided me with one kit. She will provide them for any elementary schools, middle and high school too. But um, it's so that you can put a walking school bus together from neighborhoods. And uh, they have a template and a stencil and paint and vests for the neighborhood leader to wear when they walk to school. And um, the representative will come out and speak, so we're going to have her come out and speak to the parent advisory board and see if there's any interest amongst the elementary schools. But the parents felt it was a good thing to do to get people out of their cars, out of the parking lot, <laughs> out of the traffic, and uh, get people out there walking. So that, that will come in the future. Great. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Uh, buildings and grounds? Um, sure, through the chair of the uh, committee. Um, I will be scheduling a meeting on buildings and grounds, but I also wanted to take a minute to thank Ms. Murtag for her uh, work this weekend. Mm. Uh, while many of us were uh, enjoying a long weekend, we had a couple of issues at, at buildings where we had a burst pipe um, over at the McCarthy School, 
and she and her staff responded and um, kept us up to date and got everything cleaned up. So that would really appreciate that. And also over the West School, they had a transformer of blow and um, they were without heat and electricity and um, PMLP responded and helped out. So I just wanted to extend that thank you to them as well. But um, your job is never done. Yeah. Thank you. So I just want to thank you for all you do. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. thank you, Ms. Martag. Thank you for your Anything else, Mr. Amico? I think that'll be it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Special Education Parent Advisory Board, I'll be scheduling a meeting for uh, Wednesday, December 19th at 6 o'clock. And yeah, that'll be at the Higgins. Um, any new business? No? Uh, Motion. Just if we can give a shout out to all the PTOs. Right now, they are all working so hard on fundraising for their schools. There have been amazing craft fairs last, well, two weekends ago. Mm -hmm. More coming up this coming weekend here at Higgins. Um, they also have, uh, what is it, Burke School does a special uh, oh, the holiday stroll. The holiday stroll. stroll. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on, and at this time of year, we all know how hectic it, hectic it is, but those volunteers are working very hard, and I think yeah. we should recognize them. Great. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Absolutely. Uh, next, uh, next items will be uh, held in the normal course of, uh, of business. Um, Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Thank you for a great meeting.